Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're going to be looking at the history of the United States, I guess, which if you know the history of the world video, I guess it's by Bill Wurtz. Bill Wurtz. Don't know how to pronounce that exactly properly. I'm totally Germanizing that too much. But I thought I would take a look at this. I'm a few days late for 4th of July. It's July 17th as I'm recording this. But I saw this one uh, on YouTube and I thought it'd be really interesting to look at. And obviously the United States is very tied to the history of Canada. And so, yeah, why not? Let's take a look at this. I'm sure it'll just focus on the United States. I don't even think they'll talk about Canada, but we'll find out. Apologies for the lack of videos recently. I recently got a job in Austria. So I've been adjusting to that. That is my first job in Austria. So that's pretty cool. So that's that. Without further ado, let's get into it. If you haven't already, thank you very much for subscribing, liking, commenting, all that good stuff. Uh, we recently hit 500 subscribers, which is a pretty cool milestone. And at 1,000 subscribers, I'm going to do a live stream, um, probably on Twitch, where I'll do a live reaction to a video and then I'll upload it to YouTube afterwards. So there'll be the chat and everything like that. And uh, that'll be a fun experience. So let's get into the history of the world, sorry, history of the world, history of the United States, I guess. The United States is a country on earth with 50 states. It's powerful and it's American. It's pretty cold, and human beings are trying to spread all over the planet. They reached the edge, and they got sticks and babies. Hey guys, check out this bridge. It goes to the other side of the world. And there's a lot of food. <laughs> oh, nice. Well, you're all stuck now. Okay, so people are chilling out on the land, gathering food and hunting mammoths. Well, they died, but they got a backup. Hey, now that we got food and land, let's form a society. Oh, so God, this is so cool. Someone just discovered gambling, but more importantly, someone just discovered farming. Wait, we could have just planted stuff in the ground? Yeah. And soon everybody learned about this, planting corn in the process. Oh, that's interesting. So uh, the word maize, um, in English we call it corn, obviously, but the word maize is actually, I think it's it for French and for German too. Yeah, because maize, maize of Deutsch. Um, I wonder where that word comes from, actually. I wonder if it's like a Spanish word or a Latin word, but I think almost most of the other languages that I know call it maize and they don't call it corn. I don't know where corn came from, but there you go. Just a random language fact that I know. Hey, now that we got farming, let's form a better society. Then they make some hills, then they die, but they still make those hills, making a city around one. Meanwhile, the Mayans become so obsessed with the snow. <laughs> then they collapse. Some natives in the West like the desert, building their town under some rocks. Yeah, and so the fact that this exists to this day is actually really cool. Um, I've seen this, what would you call it, I don't know, this city settlement before, um, but it sort of reminds me of when I was in Pompeii in Italy, um, which was obviously destroyed by a volcano, so not in the same sense here, but it's, it's really cool that a lot of these ancient ruins actually still exist to this day um, in, in North America, South America, and Europe too. So that's what that just kind of reminded me of the... That's crazy, though, that they had a whole city there underneath the rocks. Fascinating. North America was getting pretty diverse. Okay, so let's have a look at this here. Iroquois, Cher uh, Cherokee, Mississippi, Shawnee, Sioux. Yeah, so there, there are a ton, ton more tribes. Um, and you can see that the Iroquois here, right, they would have branched into Ontario, well, modern-day Ontario, and uh, Quebec as well. So that's where they would have been around here as well as the Sussex, uh, sorry for my pronunciation, would have also gone into Canada. Um, you also had the Mohawk um, tribes and so you had lots of different tribes at this point but I, I wonder why he chose these ones specifically. Maybe they're the largest at the time um, but yeah there were a lot of a lot of tribes and and these tribes a lot of them still exist to this day on their um, on their on their ancestral land in Canada and the United States pretty complicated and pretty beautiful sort of the aztec and the inca empires are getting started wait hold up check out this boat <laughs> it's columbus yeah from europe yo what's up my indians where my spies is at columbus politely asked his disease killed the entire population hey. yeah and so columbus obviously thinks he's landed in in india or the the indies i think is the right is the right term, although he was not the first to discover North America. Discover, meaning after the uh, the straits there, um, this sort of ice bridge between modern day Alaska and Russia um, broke off. Though that bridge, that strait, by the way, is not very, that is not 
very big. It's I think it's only about five kilometers long between the United States and Russia. Anyways, um, not the first person to discover North America. I believe it was the Vikings had discovered it around the year 500, I want to say. And they settled in what is modern day uh, Newfoundland here. And although that settlement failed, I don't think there's any clear historical reason as to why. Um, but they would have been uh, they would have been the first people in North America after that, uh, after the land bridge. Um, what would you say? Broke apart, I suppose. Spain, I found India. India? And so Europe began legally. Yeah, and the reason why they were looking for India too is because um, they wanted a faster way to um, to bring spices and other sort of exotic wares um, over from the, the traditional route, which is the Silk Road route. Assaulting the Americas. Sorry guys, give it a second. Wait, this isn't even India, but dang, check out these resources. Hey Portugal, I'll take all of this and you take this tiny chunk because I'm better than you. In the yeah, and that's why, um, to, to basically very much oversimplify it, that's why a lot of people, and this is the most easiest barroom trivia you can get, is what language do people speak in Brazil? Most people will say Spanish, but they speak Portuguese. Um, so that was a treaty between Spain and Portugal that basically divided the, the new world, new Spain. Um, up into up into those sort of crude borders at this point. Um, and then obviously over time, the nation of Brazil was formed. And that's why they speak Brazilian Portuguese over there and not Spanish. Meantime, let's use the natives to do the work for us. But the natives died, remember? So plan B. Check out the new Columbus Triangle thing, now in business. I yep, so that was just a very, uh, that was just a trade route. I want a bigger slice of that wealth cake, suckers. The British are off to set up a colony. Second try, by the way. And they... Yeah, so... Sorry, it said it there. Let me just, let me just go back. God, this is so fast. <laughs> this is so quick. I've actually never seen the History of the World video before, so I, if this is in the same sort of style, then... Second... Uh, yeah, very fast. So, Ro Ronicky, that was a, that was sort of the first failed settlement. Um in North America by the British. Uh, I think it was around 200 settlers or so had tried to settle the land, but they didn't have very good relations with the Native Americans. Um, and I think there was some crop issues as well. And they ended up leaving. However, it's not sure what happened to them. So they could have either gone back um, and they, they could have gone south um, into what is the modern day Caribbean, or they might have possibly even uh, assimilated themselves with the North, with the Native Americans. No one really knows what happened to the settlers of, uh, of Ronicky, which was the first um, settlement in North America by the British, and the most famous, obviously, being Plymouth. Um, and, uh, oh God, it's about to escape me. Jamestown. Jamestown. Try, by the way. And they did it. Look at that there tobacco. You go, Jamestown. Britain kind of sucked religiously. Ew, said the pilgrims, sailing away for Jesus. Dude, let's make some calls. Sailing away for Jesus. Oh, Henry VIII. Look at look at how many things you you created. <laughs> so obviously, yeah. So that's that's the whole history of that. I'm gonna get into that in the Henry VIII video by oversimplified, which I will probably do at some point. Colonies with more colonies in the middle. I can't eat pork, but bacon just made slavery popular. England still sucks. Hey guys, check out my new crib. You can do whatever you want. Check out those immigrants. Let's talk about the South. Here, slavery was a big hit. What did Britain do about this? Nothing. Sweet, we're free. Because we gotta stay Christian. Europe was getting intellectual. The colonists heard about it and started reading stuff like John Locke, Adam Smith, Toad, understanding liberty <laughs> and democracy. Check this one out. Britain and France are killing each other. Shocking. And this was not the only time um, that Britain and France would obviously go to war. This is probably the biggest meme of history. Um, but eventually the French did come to the aid um, of the Americans when the American Revolution broke out, which I'm sure we'll get to soon. Britain wins and they're broke. Damn, we need some cash. Hey, can we go west? No. Also give us money. So yeah, so the, so they wanted to go. So the settlers wanted to go west, obviously, to claim more land. Um, but there were treaties with the Native Americans, which wouldn't allow them to go more west. Um, so you can imagine that when you're basically stuck on this land and you're being taxed quite heavily, right, the famous no taxation without representation, um, that you're sort of not able to push on these lands, obviously going to breed a lot of resentment as well as there was uh, religious resentment and everything like this. So it was very tense, very tense. Um, and that's sort of the, 
very oversimplified history of, of the United States too, as far as my understanding is that there's always, there's always some form of tension. Um, and that's something that obviously we still have in the modern day, albeit different circumstances. Britain starts taxing the hell out of the colonies. Something just happened in Boston and Revere told everybody, let's dump some tea in the ocean cause they taxed it. Hey Britain, yep. can you stop ignoring us? Britain didn't really care. They just kept doing it. Okay, we gotta talk about this, people. So Britain's clapping us right now, but I think we can still make <laughs> peace with them. Look, another shooting. And Revere told everybody. That's not happening, said Thomas Paine, writing a book about independence. Now people hated Britain, and they declared independence. You guys suck. Psst, you wanna team up against Britain? Classic. Classic. Always, always France. <laughs> and they destroy Cornwallis. And they win. Get out of here, Britain! Now we're in control. Bro, we need a government. They create a constitution, but a bunch of farmers made it fail. Okay, we gotta talk about this, people. We need to remaster our government. The states had some ideas. Let's just do both and create the Congress and stuff. Some people like this, but some people didn't like it. So they- So I'm glad he mentioned that because I think there's sort of a myth, if you will, kind of it's kind of hard to get a pulse on what a lot of people believe when it comes to history but there's kind of this idea that i that i've heard before from other people and maybe it's just the people i've experienced with being a canadian not being an american that the founding fathers they all sort of had this one grand vision and they all worked together um and they didn't disagree they knew how it but that's not how it happened at all they fought like cats and dogs they had massive ideological differences between federalists and non-federalists which sort of creates the two-party state that we still see to this day i believe it was the whigs and the democrats if i might get that wrong um i'm sure we'll get to it in this video but yeah like they they it was not a cohesive founding <laughs> right there was lots of disagreements um probably the biggest two opponents being jefferson and alexander hamilton um with which had two completely different ideas on how federal the united states should be um so yeah so that sort of meme that they, there was perfect cohesion and everything not exactly true right they they fought heavily um over the uh over how the united states would be founded they had 10 rules to make sure they like it we need a leader so they invent the president and everyone made yeah, it this guy because he was such a legend during the war nice band george washington was a bit of a he wasn't a very successful general um, I've heard people say that, you know, George Washington was one of the greatest generals of all time, but that's sort of misinformed. Um, he's, he, he was no Napoleon. Um, I think he, he won his, his win-lose ratio, if you will, <laughs> as, if, as if it's like a counter-strike tournament. Um, was it was about half, give or take. Um, but he was very good at tactically retreating. Um, and so he wasn't the greatest general. He was a decent general. He was a competent general. Um, but obviously when you needed your first leader, having someone who would leave after two terms and would be able to work with the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists, to use the term loosely, um, was obviously very important for the United States. And he sort of guided that first, uh, that first sort of chapter, that first term, those two terms, um, through, for the history, uh, for, uh, for the country through those times. Hank Hamilton. Wait, how strict should the Constitution be? Yeah. Yes. Goodbye. Exactly. So there we saw Alexander Hamilton. Who should be? Yeah. And Thomas Jefferson, um, obviously the two biggest ideological opponents. Jefferson obviously would go on to become president and would do the Louisiana Purchase, which made him a little bit of a hypocrite, but I'm sure they'll get to that in this video. Oh. Goodbye, Washington. Wait, he's got something to say. Don't make political parties. Worst mistake of my life. Oops. Okay, said America, creating them anyway. Hey, can we not follow the law? Whoa, France is going cray cray right now. Probably because we did that. Napoleon wants to remake an empire with this huge chunk of land he's got. He failed. Might as well sell it. Hey, do you want my land? Okay. Some people saw Jefferson yep. as a hypocrite after this. I exactly right. So he's he's staunch anti-federalist. Doesn't believe that the that the federal government should have as much power as some of the other members of of Washington's cabinet. And then he goes and makes the largest land purchase in the United States history. So you know maybe maybe he was just maybe he was just uh, you know doing it out of practical purposes, but 
sort of makes him look like a bit of a hypocrite. Did it! I ended slavery! Said Eli Whitney, inventing nope. something that just increased it. What is Britain? So what, uh, so what that is there. And it's slavery! Said Eli Whitney, inventing some- Yes, so that is the cotton gin. Um, so this is made to basically industrialize the use of cotton throughout the South. And as he, as he notes here, significantly made pr uh, cotton more profitable um, for, these, for these landowners, which in turn increased the amount of uh, slaves that were in the United States, Southern United States. Something that just increased it. What is Britain doing? Dude, they're stealing our semen. Never mind. Ah, here's here's Canada's turn. And it's land. Let's go! Nice, new reef. Okay, that was quick, so <laughs> 1812. Right, this is infamously where the, the White House burned. Um, where the, the British went and set fire to the White House. And this will come up in every Reddit discussion of Canada versus USA ever. Um, but yeah, basically turned into a bit of a stalemate, but in a History of Canada video, which I will make one of these days, the War of 1812 plays an important part in the founding of the nation. Four movements. Now slavery is becoming controversial. Yeah. Yo, they're using machines now? What the heck? And it made the North more complicated. Every made it far more industrialized than the South. Um, I remember what if Altis said in one of his videos that Rural societies always win war over industrialized one or or urban ones due to the quality of their their fighters. Though you guys in the comment section pointed out that the American Civil War is a perfect example of where the urban wins over the rural. Everyone's moving to cities, and slavery is still bad, but you know it's balanced perfectly. Hey guys, I want to become a state, specifically Maine. a slave state. Yes, yeah. sir, let's go. <sighs> Screw you, we're adding Maine to the gang. Yep, yeah, exactly. Hey, Europe. So, yeah, so every time that the United States wanted to add a slave state in the South, they had to equal it out to have the um, to have a non-slave state as well. So there's just constantly this tension, right, between slave states and non-slave states. And every president um, during this, this period of time, I think starting with Franklin Pierce, I want to say, just sort of kicked the can down the road and delayed and delayed and made compromise and made compromises till the eventual blow up i suppose that was the american civil war stay out of our area you're pathetic henry clay okay wow God, it's going so fast the monroe doctrine which is something that sort of stands today basically says that european powers you stay out of the americas and the americas will stay out of european affairs um and for a very long time this was the case so the america never interfered directly in any european affairs um up until world war one up until in 1917 with world war one and then Obviously, since then, it's been uh, much more integrated, but there was a lot of, what would you say, they sort of kept out of each other's business for, for quite a long time. And so the Monroe Doctrine was sort of reinforcing that, that South America was not exactly protectorates of the United States, although the United States did have protectorates, um, but sort of said, yep, this is our area of the world. You stay to your area of the world. Just announced a dank new system. We'll be good if the South didn't hate it. John C. Calhoun's evading taxes again. <laughs> I want to remove the natives. You can't. Why? Because we said so. Okay. And he removed Does it. Does it anyways. Yeah. So uh, this was actually brought to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court sided with the native peoples. Um, and then Andrew Jackson allegedly, don't know if this is true, said, uh, make them enforce it. All right. So he went and did it anyways. Um, and this is one of the tragedies of American history is the, uh, the Trail of Tears, as it's known as. Um, where the, the Indian Removal Act moved them more into, I want to say, Oklahoma. I want to say they crossed over the Missouri River. Might be kind of wrong on that on geography, but moved them into what I believe modern day Oklahoma. Natives, check out the wigs versus the donkeys. Industry is fire right now, but factory working is horrible. Let's yep. just stop working. Let's go west because we're American. They go west, <laughs> kicking the natives and Mexico in the process. A lot of Irish people just died, so everybody starts immigrating to the country. This mm -hmm. sucks, said the Know Nothing Party, knowing nothing on foreign influence. We got more land, but how do we use it? Okay, that new land from Mexico? No slaves here. You can make a political party out of this. It didn't work, but it did piss off the South. Don't worry, I got this, said Henry Clay again, adding yep. California after our gold thing happened there. It didn't go well. Frick oh. it, let's let the people decide. Never mind. 
Yeah, that was a terrible idea. Um, <laughs> so the bleeding Kansas is exactly as he said. You let the people decide. And so people were starting to move to Kansas to try and tilt the ballot um, as to whether it would be a free state or whether it would be a slave state. And this led, obviously, to, as you can see, as this image depicts, although this is probably a bit of an exaggeration, um, a bleeding canvas. So there was obviously a lot of violence um, at this time. And yeah, it was one of the, obviously one of the forerunners to the Americans of War. The woman just had a pretty cool meetup advocating better rights, introducing the elephants as if donkeys weren't enough. Hey, excuse me, I'm in the north and my master died. Can I be free and be like a citizen? No, because you're black. The nation's- Yeah, one of the most important Supreme Court cases and yeah, it's just continuing the spiral into the American Civil War started falling apart. After all, the last several presidents didn't really even do anything. Guys, I'm Lincoln and slavery is disgusting. I'm running for president, by the way. By the way, he won. <laughs> Wait, guys, I won't take away your slaves. Just chill for a bit. Yeah. Nah. Yep. The country's fighting itself. Guys, we need to fight like a snake right now. I'm gonna free the slaves. Except it didn't really do anything, but it did change the idea. Now we're destroying slavery. Yo, but we're... Yeah, so exactly as he said. So Lincoln's position on slavery might be wrong on this. Was not exactly full abolishment as the war eventually became. However, it was to say that no more slave states would be admitted to the Union. Which, to the slave-owning states at this point, basically said slavery is over, right? The writing's on the wall because eventually more states would be added. They would have less votes, the slave-owning slave states, that is. And so this would sort of disrupt their way of life, I suppose. Um, and so, yeah. So eventually, though, the, the war did turn into one about slavery, though it didn't always uh, start off that way. Still fighting pretty good. Not a to, the, sorry, the complete abolishment of slavery. Sorry. Anymore. The North just set the South on fire, and they eventually died. Hey, nice, we won. Lincoln's yep. actually chilling now. Nope. And he gets assassinated. Great. Now we got to rebuild everything. The South. Yeah, and this is what this is what was the largest failure of Andrew Johnson. He was a Southerner. He was a Southern, uh, so Southerner, and uh, just did a terrible job during Reconstruction, and it was really up to Grant to actually sort of put those reconstruction policies in. And Andrew Johnson's just one of the most easily, in my opinion, probably the worst U.S. president, just pretty much destroyed what everything that Lincoln had fought for. Um, and just, yeah, maybe I'll do a whole video on him at some point, but probably the worst U.S. president. Um, in their history. Kind of still did slavery and pretended the- Yeah, so as it says there, sharecropping, which is basically slavery in all but name, um, where a lot of now freed blacks, if they didn't have the means to go to the North or anything like this, um, they would end up working at sometimes even the same plantation, same farm, and basically became slaves again. The war never happened. The whites wanted to stay the best race, so they start using violence. And now the U.S. was looking beautiful on the outside, but disgusting in the inside. Exactly. So again, a lot of tension still. And this is where the sort of idea of states' rights come in. So this was one of the big push for southern states to sort of talk about states' rights and to refer to the Constitution. Quite a lot of sort of originalist constitutions. Um... And this is still a topic that continues to this day. Um, not to get too spicy into it, but 2022, obviously Roe v. Wade has been all but overturned um, in the Supreme Court. And so a lot of it talks about states' rights for the ability to do this. I'm not getting into that discussion, but this is just sort of, you can see the history of where it all parallels up to this modern time. Businesses became bigger, but the working conditions became badder. This sucks, said the Knights of Labor. Yeah, we're only taking... This is just... It's all so quick. It's like, I I don't know what the Haymarket Square... I don't know what that is, but it's just so fast that like... <laughs> almost wish it sort of took its time a little bit more. But 
Hey, I guess that's the point of this video. Skilled workers, bro. Hey farmers, do you hate railroads? And mechanized farming? Introducing the Grangers, now the Populists. The South was getting more industrial. See, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> well, it's been now more racist. No, no, trust me, it's separate but equal. I'm gonna buy- Yeah, and this was pretty much sort of how the United States was for, I don't know, a, a, a handful of decades of separate but equal. Um, and this was eventually overturned uh, of Brown versus the Education Board in the 1950s, where separate but equal is inherently unequal, right? So if you had a restaurant, um, if you had a movie theater, any sort of business, as long as you had a section for people of color, then it was separate but equal. But it's complete nonsense. That in and of itself is inequality. Bye everybody. Wait, why don't we donate all our money for society? Sweetie, let's focus on the cities, which are garbage right now. Introducing the progressives. Let's fix that crap. Oh shoot, we just ran out of land. <laughs> That's some good grub right there. But Spain controls Cuba. And the Philippines. You s yeah. sunk our ship? Bro, we didn't even do anything. <laughs> now we got that grub. In God, it's so quick. But yes, the Spanish-American War, this was obviously the, the sinking of the USS Maine was blown out of the water. Wow, you like that pun there? Blown out of the water by uh, the US press. And it really was one of the first popular wars, if you will, for the United States where public perception was really big on going to war. Um, and so this was, this was probably the first war. Oh, I don't know what I did. Maybe I touched something. Uh, probably the first war where public perception was really on the side to go to war and declare war in Spain, where they got Cuba and Hawaii, although Cuba would become independent and would become a protectorate. And they'd also grab the Philippines in this. Stuff too. Sherman's- oh, I missed something here. Hold up. Let's just go back. Oh, all right. There's the Philippines. There we go. Hey, bro, we didn't even do anything. <laughs> Now we got that grub, including the Philippines? This is lit! Said Will Who would be assassinated? William McKinley getting assassinated. And they lose Cuba. The United States becomes a world power while doing some other stuff too. Sherman's vice president, not William Sherman, this a different Sherman, under the new president, William Sherman. Taft. <laughs> while Europe's killing themselves in this war, the US was actually chilling. Germany just ruined it. Um, yep, so the... <laughs> that's so quick. So the, the Zimmerman telegram was probably one of the worst informed decisions of all time. Basically, Germany had sent a telegram to Mexico, inviting them to invade the United States from the south. Mexico was in absolutely no condition to have ever done this, but the telegram was accept it was sorry, was intercepted by the British, who presented it to the Americans, which obviously there you go. And and now Woodrow Wilson also a terrible president, but we'll get into that at some point, um, you know, wanting to bring democracy to the world, if you will, the sort of Wilson doctrine, which led to the 17 points, which was ultimately ignored by the Treaty of Versailles um, and the founding of the League of Nations, which the United States was not even in because Congress didn't pass what he wanted. I'm gonna show you what democracy feels like. Wait, we already did this scene. After the war, Germany was the dunce force to pay a lot of money. Check out the leak. And I've gone into this topic multiple times. Check out my oversimplified um, Hitler or oversimplified uh, World War II. League of Nations. Can you guys join it, please? No. Whoops, a yeah. disease just killed everybody. Russia just became- Yeah, and so- God, so quick. So the Spanish flu obviously takes out more people than in World War I itself. Right, so more people die of the Spanish flu than there were casualties in the Second World War. Um, I don't know how much of the world um, succumbed to the, to, the, to the Spanish flu. The reason why it was called the Spanish flu, by the way, it, had not, it didn't originate in Spain or anything like this, but the, the virus was obviously going around at the time and it was reported on in Spain because they were a neutral country. And so they didn't have the censorship of the press that other states like, um, sorry, that other countries like Germany or France or the UK or anything had. Um, but Spain was able to report on it. And so when the when the disease eventually broke out to the rest of the world, it was called the Spanish flu because it was first reported, although not discovered, if you will, there. Came the Soviet. And then the Russian Revolution happens and whew, here we go, right? And there's, yeah, that's a whole video in and of itself. And this is probably one of the arguably arguably 
one of the most important events of the 20th century. Union, and it scared the crap out of everybody. Yep. Alcohol just got banned. That's kind of sick. And women got the right to vote. Good Finally. idea. Hey, blacks, tired of the South? Move to the North and share that epic culture. The 1920s were now in cars watching movies and breaking it down. And this stock thing's gonna do good. Just kidding. Hoover tried doing something but failed. Then FDR comes in with the New Deal and it actually worked, but it failed. Yo. And it failed. Did I miss something there? Thing but failed. Then FDR comes in with the New Deal. Okay. And it actually worked, but it failed. I'm kind of curious what he means by and it failed. Failed. Maybe I'm missing something here, but generally I believe the New Deal is considered quite a large success, but maybe you guys can let me know in the comment section there what I'm, what I'm missing here. Yo, Germany's going wild, Italy's going wild, and Japan? Guys, we should team up and take over the entire world. Uh, okay, so if he's presenting World War II now, then... Okay, so first it was a pact of steel between Italy and Germany that was signed in 1930... Oh. 1939, I believe, and Japan was very hesitant to sign this sort of pact. Eventually, Japan would later sign the Tripartite, tac, tri, pri, tripartite Pact, which would bring them into the Axis powers. However, it wasn't that they all signed the pact. Then World War II started. Japan was not a part of the Axis at this point, although they had been in a war with China since 1937, which was obviously, what would you say, threatening to the United States um, because the Philippines is one of their controlled regions um, uh, in the world. Damn it, I gotta run for a third term. The US did their same. And uh, after this, there was the 22nd Amendment, I wanna say, I might be getting that wrong, that limited uh, presidential terms to two. Brilliant move, and was actually just chilling. Japan wanted more land, but they were scared of the US, so Japan spits on them. They declare war, and the others declare war on the US. Hey, that's what friends do. Which was, Ter well, I mean, they were going to do it anyways, but yeah, so Japan, eh, yeah, okay, they want more land, but really it's about resources. Um, Japan is obviously lacking a lot in oil. You need oil to fight wars, obviously. Um, and so they thought that if they could do a quick strike on the U.S. Navy um, at Pearl Harbor and damage their 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 ships so much that, they, that the U.S. would basically sue for peace and then Japan could go and do their thing. Turned out to be a complete failure, though this, but, um, sorry, though this was their initial plan and they knew that they couldn't win a protracted war against the United States. The US is making a big fat bomb, like a really big one. We gotta take down Germany, man. They're freaking crazy. So they take down Germany. Then the US starts taking down Japan. Roosevelt died and Harry Truman carries on the presidency. Mr. President, we can't invade the mainland. Our soldiers will die. Bro, let's just use the bomb. So yep. they drop it on Japan. The war ended after that. Goodbye, League of Nations. Hello, United Nations. But we got a problem. These two don't even like each other. They start another war. Now with nuclear bombs. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't do that, but I still hate you. It's alliance time, baby. Yeah, and so he's gonna rush over this. If you haven't, if you haven't checked it out, uh, Cold War Oversimplified. I did a whole video on that. Go check it out there. Now with other countries to back us up. Also, also Germany's in shambles. It's like the hotspot. There's some other wars going on and stuff. Back <laughs> so quick. Other wars, other wars and stuff. Yeah, so the Korean War, Vietnam War. This was sort of the era um, and arguably still continues today of the proxy war where the United States and the Soviet Union, they don't fight directly. However, they fund um, smaller nations such as in this case, uh, uh, South Vietnam. Well, so Vietnam's a little different, but um, South Korea, Soviets are funding North Korea, Korea, sorry. China obviously comes to the side of North Korea, but the Soviets and the United States do not directly engage in combat. Them up. Look, it's communism, and it scared the crap out of everybody. The two superpowers wanted to be better than the other in weapons, wars, allies, mm. and now in space. Mm. The Soviet yep. Union just put a thing in space. Oh, heck nah. Then the US creates NASA. America is booming, like the population. Everyone's got television, and fast food becomes a revelation. Like, we're talking about the first McDonald's here. Wait, <laughs> Cuba's communist? This results in the end of the world. Almost. Screw this, said Kennedy. We're going to the moon. And Again, I've already talked about this at length, but yeah, the the um, how close it really was during the Cuban Missile Crisis. I talked about a, a story 
in the oversimplified video. Go check that out there. And he gets assassinated. Racism is bad. Civil rights time. Buses. Education. Marches. Oh shoot, Luther King, man? He's standing for equality to fight racism. And the US agrees. Dude, I saw him, man. Why is everything sexy? Lyndon wants to take- What? Did I Wait, what? Dude, I saw him, man. Why is everything sex- Oh, okay. See, Lyndon wants to take Vietnam to the next level, so he sends a lot of troops. The US slapped the Soviets in their face and landed the first dudes on the moon, introducing Richard Nixon. And he's done with Vietnam because it's a disaster. Ah, uh, well, it took a long time for him to be done with Vietnam. Um, he, and also he ramped up the missions in Cambodia. There was the bombing of Cambodia and Laos that was under his administration too. So it wasn't just done with it, though eventually he did negotiate, what would you say, uh, uh, loss with dignity, if you will. Um, but yeah, he didn't just end the war. There goes Watergate ruining Nixon's career. Now yeah. nobody trusts the government. Iran just- I wouldn't say that was the start. Had a revolution, kidnapping multiple Americans because Jimmy Carter and their king were best friends. It's Reagan time. Technology is getting better too and the world's more connected. Oh my God, bro, it's computers. You can check emails <laughs> and play games on it. I'm gonna make things more free to you guys. This makes the Soviet Union collapse. And, yep. But hey, at least Germany's back together. Companies start becoming bigger and bigger. Thanks, Bill. Some buildings just got bombed. Happy New Year. Then, obliterated. Then a war starts over that. Surprise, everyone's got a cell phone now. There's the earth where I was actually born. It's on fire. And the economy crashed again. Surprise, Obama. And now, Obamacare. It's like healthcare, but from Obama. Now you can talk to people online on your phone now you can order stuff online that looks like an nft on, on your phone everything just got shut down and it just got political and canceled on twitter then we buy the universe or maybe go extinct i don't know <laughs> cool yeah so that was a great video um i really really enjoyed that hope you guys liked it too yeah that was fun maybe i'll do the history of the world video i guess um maybe i'll do the history of the world video i guess i guess Anyways, thank you all very much for joining me. If you made it this far in the video, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. You're the best. And I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.